Richard Krause. When we when we read the book, when we look back in her life, um, is she uh, a cautionary tale about fame, or is she someone to be emulated? I think a little of both. Yeah. I think you know you look at her early her early years when the studio pushed her into that marriage mm -hmm. with Nikki Hilton simply to help promote Father of the Bride, yeah. um, and which was a horrible experience for her. Um, you know, so there there that was an example of the cost, uh, the personal costs of fame and stardom and what you give up um, when to have to have a kind of public life. But she also was very very smart, and 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 I think we we can learn from her. Elizabeth, I think, in the end, despite all these husbands and you know all of these failed relationships, she's not an unhappy woman. She has four children who turned out really well. Um, she seems to have lots of friends. She's she's got the respect and the affection of the industry. So she, by being herself, by being honest about who she was and the kind of life she wanted to lead, I think she she teaches us a lot that you don't have to make things up about yourself necessarily. Um, you just have to make the public want to buy what you already have. Right, right. Uh, why does the book stop in 1981? Is there a, uh, another book? Is the post-fame, the post-big-time <laughs> post. movie career right. is just, I think, as fascinating as the life that came before. It is, except that I would find that my, my thesis would just keep repeating itself because, um, you know, it's how to be a movie star. And I think what I, what I showed with um, The Little Foxes, she took... Mm -hmm. I end with her on the stage of the little foxes, you know, basking in her applause. I wanted her to go out on top. And, um, but what, what I'm showing there is how she took those lessons of how to be a movie star and applied them to Broadway. Well, she then later took those lessons and applied them to her work around AIDS, to her business endeavors, um, to everything she did after that. You know, she always did it with a movie star's flair. Yeah, she has. A, there's a, a, another story uh, from the set of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, where she doesn't want to come in until 10 a.m. Right. And they say, okay, yeah, don't worry, but of course you can come in. And then she's like, I want it in writing yes. because I know what will happen see, if I don't get it in writing. He, again, that's what I yeah. say. She was very, very smart. She was very, very shrewd. This was a girl who grew up on the sets of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, you know, behind the scenes of the movie's, you know, most enterprising, most glamorous movie factory. And, you know, she knew, she learned early on how you set a deal, how you make a movie, and how you stay famous. And I think also having a mother that pushed her in the way that she was helped uh, give her a, um, a sort of a, an attitude, or a shrewder sort of attitude about life in general. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sarah perhaps. Taylor was very shrewd. She knew exactly what to do with Elizabeth. She pushed her in there, got her got her to become the star she herself had always wanted to be. Um, you know, there, was a li there were a lot of tensions between Elizabeth and her mother because Elizabeth didn't want to be uh, a movie star in the beginning. And, uh, but she, I think she came to be very grateful to her mother because, after all, um, the world and the life that Elizabeth was able to live uh, was simply because of Sarah. Well, there's one line in the book, uh, and I, I can't remember what it is exactly, but you say something like, uh, Sarah Taylor, who had one moment, fleeting moment of fame in 1922 or something, whatever it was, it was very kind of, I thought, whatever, it was, ooh, that's a little dismissive. Well, well it, was. it was, you know, she, she was, you know, she was in one play that was a big hit, and, and she took it to London, and, you know, she, for a moment, she tasted that, wow, this, I love this, but her next play was a flop, and then, and, and, you know, so on, yeah. but she had tasted it, and she knew that she wanted some of that for her daughter. Right, right. Um, I think... Oh yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to ask about um, the the quote uh, that Elizabeth Taylor is the Madame Curie of fame extension. Mm, yes. I just I was so taken with the quote, but it, explain to me what it means to you. You know, she was always able to keep going. You know, there, she was a she was a child star, and most child stars don't make it to young adult stars. Well, she did, and then she, most young adult stars don't become superstars, which she did. Um, she made it past forty. Uh, in the movies, um, and she it was always a different image. You know, it started off being the little ingenue, and then she went to the, you know, the vixen, then she went to the diva, then she went to the, you know, and then she went to, you know, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, where she could play the great character roles. Um, and even post-fame, you know, even post-movie fame, she has been able to create herself as a crusader. She's always been able to find a way to stay in the public's eye. Um, and that's what I mean. To, to, today, fame extension is easy for some of these washed-up stars. They go on The Biggest Loser or whatever reality show is, it wants to hire them for the week. For Elizabeth did it in a way where she ended up giving us these am amazing roles that have become part of our cultural heritage. Right. Richard Krause.